Welcome to NCIX Tech Tips. This week, AMD is launching their new lineup of APUs. Their codename Kaveri, and AMD, and this is in typical APU fashion, has promised to deliver some good CPU performance and some very impressive graphics performance to go along with it. Now, these aren't designed to go head to head against Intel's highest end Haswell parts, but the reality of it is, is they, they aren't designed to do necessarily the same things. These are different processors. So they come in right around the $200 mark and the aim is, like I said, to provide decent frame rates in games without the need for dedicated graphics cards as well as being able to provide truly next generation compute performance using that onboard graphics. You know, if I lifted then this might look impressive. All right, so the two main code words for this series of APUs are Steamroller and GCN. Steamroller is AMD's next-gen CPU architecture for the four CPU cores, and GCN, or Graphics Core Next, is the code name for their Hawaii architecture. So the same, the same GPU technology that we saw on their R9 290 series. So we've got things like DirectX 11.2 support, uh, true audio support, and support for AMD's Mantle API. Actually, something that's interesting to note is this processor actually uses almost half of the entire die area for the GPU, which is going to be focused on gaming performance and compute performance. That amount of space means that there's not a whole lot of room for the CPU cores, and so Kaveri is actually a pretty mundane affair on the CPU side. It's uh, got four cores with the high end hitting 3.7 gigahertz uh, or a turbo of up to four gigahertz with the low end part clocking in at 3.3 and a turbo up to 3.8. But the interesting about this is the way that AMD is now calculating that core count. They don't go, okay, quad core processor with a GPU. Now what they say is, okay, this is the A107850K. It has four CPU cores and eight GPU cores for a max number of compute cores totaling 12. And the way that AMD is dividing this up is how many separate threads the processor can work on at a time given a sufficiently optimized workload. So Kaveri, because the CPUs aren't that exceptional, but the GPUs are awesome, the actual performance boost is going to come from HSA and OpenCL and other kinds of GPU compute. So the idea, the reason it works so well is that on a normal processor, even a previous APU, the CPU part and the GPU part would need to work on things kind of separately and then send data back and forth to each other. It would normally be done over the PCI Express bus. Kaveri features HSA, which instead allows the CPU and GPU to share memory and work on the same single task without communication overhead. So it's kind of like if you had like a, a group essay to write and everyone would kind of write part of it and then send it to each other for revisions by email and then they would make revisions and send it to everyone else. There's a lot of overhead and a lot of time wasted. Uh, HSA is more like using Google Docs with everyone making changes at the same time and getting the task done all at the same time. The only issue is that the software needs to be written to take advantage of this. So we won't see, you know, huge, you know, everywhere application support until developers patch it in. But there is good news. Anything coded with OpenCL 2.0 in mind will support HSA and Coding for OpenCL 2.0, according to AMD, is actually going to be easier than implementing OpenCL was in the past. There's actually one more interesting feature of the low-end A87600, and that is a configurable TDP. So AMD hasn't just kind of gone, okay, well, we're going to target performance and that's about it. They're also doing some interesting things with power consumption. So the 7600 has an unlocked a 65 watt or a 45 watt TDP. Early testing shows the unlocked one acts similar to 65 watt, but we're not sure how overclocking will affect that, and GPU overclocking looks like it might be pretty impressive on these. But that's a very interesting feature because the ability to limit power consumption and silence the system at the cost of CPU clock speed is great for certain applications, like a home theater PC, for example. It should be noted that GPU clocks remain untouched, so gaming, multimedia, and GPU compute tasks should run as they normally would, regardless of what TDP you have it set to. Now, the Kaveri platform will use the FM2 Plus socket. 
unlike the old APUs which used FM2 socket motherboards. Now, if you didn't know this already, this will be a, a bit of a primer, the old FM2 processors will work just fine in the new FM2 Plus boards, but these new FM2 Plus chips are going to require FM2 Plus motherboards to go with them. No backwards motherboard compatibility if you want Kaveri. All right, so let's end on a note about graphical performance. I'm sure you guys all want to know about Mantle. And because the GPU cores are GCN, they will get Mantle support. Like, when Mantle support comes, boom, you're going to have it. But it still remains to be seen exactly how much of a boost this will provide and how it will affect the, the gaming landscape. But guys, do stay tuned because we will be doing a video of that right away as soon as we're able to. Based on some demos I've seen, it could be incredibly impressive. But for now, um, you know, uh, all we can really do is test with OpenGL and DirectX. And the good news is that Kaveri is also pretty boss, even without Mantle. So Wheels did some testing on his bench and found that on Battlefield 4, at 1080p, low slash medium details, the A8 7600, so the lower end part, achieved 29 FPS, while the A10 7850K spit out 39 frames per second. This handily beat the Intel Core i7-4770K, which chugged along at 12 FPS. This is really, you know, AMD is, is kind of drawing attention in my mind to Intel's um, omission of iris-grade graphics on their desktop enthusiast class processors at this point. And I'll be interested to see if, we, uh, if there's some kind of a strategy shift over at Intel to account for this enormous difference in gaming performance between their highest-end chip and a, a fairly mundane APU. But uh, this is all sort of speculation now. So here's what we know at this moment. Basically, if you're looking for a rig that can provide a very comfortable gaming experience at low to medium settings in modern games, this is pretty tough to beat. With a $200 processor and sub $100 motherboard, you can have a very solid mid-range system for not a whole lot of money, and you can upgrade it in the future. Oh, and I, speaking of systems, we actually have a system. So this system right here, featuring Kaveri, is actually going to be Esther's system pick of the week. So if you want to learn a little bit more about it, click this annotation to check out her video as well. Don't forget to subscribe, as usual, to NCIX Tech Tips for more videos like this from NCIX.com. Thanks so much for watching, guys.